Hi everyone, I'm Doug Black, Editor-in-Chief at Inside HPC. We're at the SC22 conference in Dallas, and with me now is Kurt Kukine. He is Senior Vice President of Marketing at DDN, the AI data management company. And uh, Kurt, it's a pleasure to be with you. Hey, thanks for coming by to talk to us. Okay, great. So, tell us a little bit about what you're emphasizing and focusing on this week at the conference. Yeah, so, um, we talked about actually just before this that you know, the market has really come to DDN yeah. in terms of AI interest, uh, interest in GPUs and other accelerators even. And um, DDN is well placed with our parallel file system to be able to service those workloads. And we found um, really wide adoption, especially at the high end, right, with the scalable systems. Um, but we're seeing more and more commercial customers who maybe are deploying single systems or um, a smaller cluster of systems being interested in figuring out how to maximize the performance of storage I.O. into those systems as well as just manage this explosion of data that they're figuring out is either here already or just lurking on the horizon. Yeah, certainly commercial adoption of A.I. is growing and A.I. is all about data. Um, now, I think you're seeing a continued expansion in the adoption of GPUs, is that right? For sure, yeah. Um, you know, the interest there is not abating yeah. at all. Um, and especially on the more scalable systems, we see more and more customers um, either coming to us to uh, deploy them themselves. Um, we're seeing a lot of folks who are interested in um, commercial and educational a cooperation. Um, so we've seen um, a lot of our educate, higher education customers who have experience deploying these really complex systems, uh, engaging with commercial customers to be able to host these systems or provide them out as a service. Um, and so helping those folks broker that entire system um, is um, some an, an interesting trend that we're yeah. seeing more. And I think you're also seeing adoption of other accelerators as possible complements to GPUs. For sure, yeah. for sure. I think um, there's interest, there's always interest in the market in diversifying options, right? Um, and so NVIDIA did such a great job of capturing so much of the mind share initially and having a fantastic product out there. Um, but we are seeing, you know, uh, we had customers who already were CPU clusters, um, and so adopting the NVIDIA systems in with those was kind of a first step um, in what we're doing, but we see storage as really a unifying platform for being able to adopt all of these different technologies, and so we work with a lot of different vendors um, to be able to service the workloads that are needed. Folks like Cerebris right here across from us, um, and Intel Habana, and others that are doing similar AI type work. Yeah, you're kind of in, at the nexus of a lot of these technology trends. Exactly, so and so um, not having to move the data, yep. um, having something that has already been validated in terms of configurations. We've been working with all of these companies on reference architectures mm -hmm. to be able to say, um, yeah, this is how you would configure it to work together. And in fact, we just announced a new one this week um, with Atos. Um, and so, yeah, just allowing our customers to quickly adopt this technology because they have a proven roadmap that we know works. Okay, so, and I understand you're also seeing strong demand for repatriation of cloud data. Tell us about that trend. We are, right? Um, so, you know, the, I think the, narr the narrative over the last five years has really been everybody's trying to go cloud first. Um, and I don't think that will dramatically change for some of the smaller workloads, um, maybe some of the more business oriented, you know, keeping the lights on type mm -hmm. of workloads. Um, but for things like AI data, um, especially what we would call big AI data, right? certainly there is small <laughs> AI data too, you know, things that are um, uh, us as individuals, we're four rows in a, in a uh, massive spreadsheet in the sky, right, that can define exactly what we're going to be purchasing for the next 30 years. Right. Um, so things like um, customer preference, and things like that, well, some people might consider those big. They aren't really big. But when you're looking at things like, you know, um, 
the car makers trying to develop autonomous technologies, right? Where they are having to ingest terabytes of data a day. Um, you know, sometimes, yeah, just petabytes and petabytes of data that they're going to have to retain to be able to go back and train and retain on. Uh, they need to be able to maintain these really massive workloads. We see similar things for um, life sciences, yeah. right? They've got all of these huge imagery or information that they're pulling off of systems in real time and trying to process that quickly. Mm -hmm. Um, through these AI machines. Um, and so being able to, as you said, serve as that nexus for um, data keeps customers from having to move that data all over. Um, and there is, you know, we are seeing a penalty for those customers who are having to do real processing in the cloud, right? As soon as they're starting to touch that data again, um, that's where they see the sky cost skyrocket. Exactly. Um, exactly. And, yeah. you know, there's the inherent latencies there as yeah. well. And then just the sheer data movement, right? right. Um, and so why not keep that performance oriented data local um, while maybe shipping some of the colder data um, up to somewhere else? Yeah. And um, I guess DBN is shifting a little bit. You, we were talking about usability and more services. Yeah, I, guess that's yeah, I think that is kind of part and parcel with yeah. this cloud theme. Um, to be able to help those customers, um, whether they're bringing data back from the cloud, they were already just dealing with a service, right, where they could get on-demand um, resources, um, or customers who are now coming to us that are maybe less familiar with a parallel file system uh, and the inherent complexities of AI data management, um, we are looking to be able to allow them to move to a much more service-oriented um, architecture. Right. and be able to basically be able to provision these things very, very quickly um, and focus on providing just excellent services to their customers. And so some of the things that we're doing um, come down to some of the fundamental things, right? Like being able to provide um, talent. IT talent is a, a scarce resource these days. Yep. Um, and we do have con connections with our customers at universities. And so um, being able to help uh, folks coming out of college who have some high performance computing experience, um, being able to place them. Um, and then also for commercial customers who are looking to do, adopt these technologies, we even offer fully managed services. Mm -hmm. So essentially, treat their on site hardware as a service, um, and we're looking to more and more productize that process across the board. Yeah, and um, now we're, I guess we're going to see some of that trend reflected in what's coming up for Exascaler, because over the last few years, you've really added a lot of performance enhancements, but now you're bringing more of a focus on usability. For sure, right? I mean, uh, the Luster file system is what's underlying Exascaler, um, and that was always a bit focused on the peak of performance. Um, and when you look at what we've been doing with Exascaler is not forget those performance roots, of course, mm -hmm. Um, we've been working on things like small file performance, um, metadata performance, um, and so those things are definitely essential still um, to being able to service those workloads, but um, you know, creating usable systems that can be widely adopted um, in more of a diverse IT organizations is also a fundamental piece of what we're doing these days. Okay, well, great. So we've been with Kurt Kokain of DDF. Uh, Kurt, it's been a pleasure. Great. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for having me. All right.